Bisyata Deshmaya, we're going to learn Erevin Daf Samach Zayin. We're going to start nine lines from the top of the Omid. Says the Gemara, Rav Chizda v'Rav Sheishes kipogi behade adodi. When it happens that Rav Chizda and Rav Sheishes would meet each other, Rav Chizda marta on sifzvase mimasniyasa de Rav Sheishes. Rav Chizda was his lips would tremble from from the breadth of knowledge of Rav Sheishes. Rav Sheishes had a tremendously broad knowledge of Mishnayis, of Brises, and could ask questions that Rav Chizda would find a challenge, to, uh, would ask contradictions or seeming contradictions that Rav Chizda would find a challenge to answer. The Rav Sheishes, Mirta Kule Gufe, Rav Sheishes, his entire body would tremble, Mi Pilpule de Rav Sheishes, de Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda's strength and quality was not as much with his breadth of, of knowledge of Mishnayis and Brises as it was with his pilpil, with his analytical skills. And when Rav Chizda would ask a very deep question, Rav Sheshis would sometimes have a challenge to answer it. And now the Gemara is going to bring two questions that Rav Chizda is going to ask Rav Sheshis. And they're both related to Eruvin. Boy Minei Rav Chizda mi Rav Sheshis. If you have two homes, one on each side of Roshus Arabim, Roshus Arabim is going through these two homes. And some goyim came and actually put up a wall, a partition around the two homes, including the area in between them that formerly was a Roshus Arabim and now has been walled in. And now Biblically speaking, the entire area should have the status of Erushus Hayochid. And the area between the two homes could be compared on some level to a Chotzer shared by both homes. So the question is, Mahu, it, now it's the middle of Shabbos, you cannot make an Eruv. There's no Goy there, so there's no issue here of Schiras or anything like that. There's two Yisraelim, and the question is whether one Yisrael can relinquish his rights to the area in between to the other Yisrael, and now the other Yisrael should be able to carry from his home to this area in between the two homes. That was Rav Chizda's question to Rav Sheishis. And Rav Chizda now is going to explain and narrow down his question a little bit. According to Shmuel, who we saw before, he held that one cannot relinquish one's rights from one chotza to another chotza. There's no question. If in the case of two chatzeris, which we're talking about mechotzer lechotzer, where Shmuel was talking about, when you had two chatzeris, that they could have made an Eruv before Shabbos, had they wanted to. Motsum Orve, had they wanted to make an Eruv, they could have. And nonetheless, Omrus, you said, Ein bitul rishus mi chotzer you cannot relinquish your rights from one chotzer to another chotzer. Hocha, in this case where you have two houses with a shared area in between, the Iboyel Iruvim Esmuel, had you wanted to make an Eruv on before Shabbos, Loimotzim Orva, you would not have been able to make an Eruv because before Shabbos this was actually not a Chotzer, it was just a regular Shusarabim. Loikolchkin, we can take it for granted that in this case, according to Shmuel, one would not be able to, to use Bittel and relinquish one's rights one to the other. Kitabayaloch says Rav Chizda, when do we, where is my question applicable? Or according to who is my question applicable? Aliba demand the Omar according to Rabbi Yechonon. Rabbi Yechonon held that the Omar Yesh Bitul Rashus Michotzer Lachotzer. He said that he held that one can relinquish one's rights from one Chotzer to the next. And the question is, how some do Iboyel Iruvim Etmuel in the case of the two Chatzerais, where had they wanted to make an Eruv before Boyim Orva, they could have made an Eruv. Bitul Enami Motzim Evatel. Then in the same way as you could have made an Eruv, the Chachomim said, if you didn't make an Eruv, you can use Bitul on Shabbos. Aval Hochebe, in this case of the Roshos Harabim, Deloi Motzim Ma'arvim Etmuel, you could not have made an Eruv before Shabbos, even had you wanted to, because it was a Roshos Harabim, Bitule Nami Le Motzim Evatel. It could be in that case, the Chachomim did not allow you to use Bitul in order to allow one of the homeowners to carry in the area in between. 
That was one side of the question. Oidilma. The other side is Loishna, that it makes no difference whether they could have made an Eruv before Shabbos or not, and one can use Bittel on Shabbos. That was what Rav Chizda asked Rav Sheshes. Omale, Rav Sheshes answered to Rav Chizda, Ein mevatlin, that since before Shabbos you could not have made an Eruv, the Chachomim did not allow you to use Bittel on Shabbos. And now Rav Chizda is asking a second question to Rav Sheshes. And here we're talking about where there were two Yisraelim sharing a chotza, and there was also a goy there. And we know that if there's a goy in a chotza together with the Yisrael, the Yisrael cannot make an Eruv, unless before they make an Eruv, they do schirus. If they, if they hire from, or they lease from the goy, or somebody with permission to use the goy's property, you lease from them a, some part of his property, and then his property is also somewhat considered as belonging to the two Yisraelim, then they can make an Eruv before Shabbos or do Bittel on Shabbos. And exactly how this works and why it works, we've discussed previously in this parak. So now Rav Chizda is asking Rav Sheshus the following question. Meis nochri b'Shabbos mahu. What happens if this Goy that was sharing the Chotzer with them, he dies on Shabbos? And we're talking about a case where they did not lease from this Goy before Shabbos, nor did they make an Eruv before Shabbos, and therefore they could not carry in the Chotzer on Shabbos because there's no Eruv. And now this Goy died, and the Goy died, so he should not really be an issue anymore. His heirs or whoever's going to inherit his home is not here for Shabbos, and, but there's no Eruv. So there's still two Yisraelim who, who have a Chotzer, but have not made an Eruv. So even though the Goy is not an issue anymore, the Yisraelim cannot carry in the Chotzer. It's on Shabbos. The Goy is no longer here. One cannot make an Eruv on Shabbos, but can they use Bittel? Can one Yisrael relinquish his rights to the Chotzer, to the other Yisrael, and then allow the of the Yisrael to carry from his house to the Chotzer. And now Rav Chizda is going to refine his question a little bit. According to Rabbi Yechonon who held that when a Goy comes to the Chotzer on Shabbos, which is something we discussed previously, then the Yisrael is allowed to lease from the Goy on Shabbos a part of the Goy's Rishos, and then once the Israel has leased on Shabbos from the Goy, they can use Bittel. Then later by Loch, according to Rabbi Eichanon, I don't have a question. Hash the Tarti of Dinon, in the case where the Goy came on Shabbos, that we allowed him to do two things on Shabbos. Number one, the Schirus, leasing from the Goy. And number two, Bittel, relinquishing the rights for one Israel to another. Then in our case, where the Goy died in the middle of Shabbos, and the only question is, can they do Bittel? Of course you can do Bittel. Where am I going to ask the question that's only going to be according to according to Shmuel who held that one cannot lease from a Goy on Shabbos and then consequently, consequently to do the, the Bittel. Tarta who delivered in on the question is is does Shmuel only say that you cannot do two things on Shabbos also Schirus and then the Bittel? Ha Chada of Dinon, but one procedure just the Bittel maybe Shmuel will allow. Oidel Malayshna or Shmuel says it makes no difference if it's one procedure or two. One's not allowed to do it on Shabbos. Omer late Rav Sheshes answer to Rav Chizda Ani Oimer Mevatlin. I personally hold that one is allowed to do Bittel, one Yisrael can relinquish his rights to the other Yisrael, and that, that should be Mutter on Shabbos. Vahamnuna Oma, however, Vahamnuna, he argues, and he holds, Ein Mavatlin, he says that you cannot do this Bittel on Shabbos, you cannot relinquish your rights of one Yisrael to another on Shabbos. And Rashi explains that if Sheshus himself, who held that you can do Bittel, he says it's not similar to the case that we were discussing before with the Goy coming on Shabbos. In the case of the Goy coming on Shabbos, over there Shmuel held that you cannot do a Schirus on Shabbos, because since before Shabbos the Goy was not here, you couldn't make an Eruv. Or more accurately, the Eruv you made before the Goy came would have become nullified when the Goy came. And therefore, he held that you cannot do the, you cannot do the bittel. 
the schirus and then the bittel. However, in this case here, where the goy was here when Shabbos came in, and they could have made an eruv, and since they could have made the eruv, therefore Rav Sheshis holds that you can also use bittel now that the goy has died. However, Rav Huna argues and says that you cannot use bittel here because he says in this case here, where the goy was here when Shabbos came in, you couldn't have just made an eruv. You could only have made an eruv if you first lease property from the goy. Since you couldn't have made an eruv without first leasing, therefore, even though the goy is died now, we, the Chachomim did not allow you to use bittel. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rav Yehuda Omar Shmuel. And we're moving now on to a new topic. Rav Yudam Ashmol said as follows, Nochri sheyesh loy Pesach arbo al arbo. This goy, and let's just get back into the case, we're talking here about a chotzer or a movui, where you've got a goy that was sharing the area with some Yisraelim, and the goy cannot join in the Eruv. And unless you lease from the goy beforehand, and then if it's before Shabbos you make an Eruv, if it's on Shabbos you can use Bittel, then the goy actually destroys and restricts the the chotza, or the chotza or the mavoi. So now Rabbi Yudam Ashmuel said, what happens if this goy, besides for having his own entrance or being part of the chotza and mavoi, he has his private entrance out to an area behind his home? The question is, do we say that his main entrance and exit is his private entrance and exit, and then he's not really considered as somebody who's sharing the Chotzer and Movoy with the other Israelim, and therefore the fact that it, they haven't leased from him and made an Eruv is not going to be an issue. As long as the Israelim have an Eruv, that's sufficient. Or do we say no? Do we say in spite of the fact that he has his own private entrance and exit, he still also uses the Chotzer and the shared area with the Israel, and since there's a guy who's sharing the area with the Israel, he restricts the Eruv. That was the question. So Yehuda Mashmuel says, Nochri shiesh loy Pesach arba al arba, a guy who has his own exit or entrance, which is of significant size, it's at least four tvachim by four tvachim, pasuach le and it's open to an open field outside the chotzer, outside the movi, it's his own private Throughway to the to the fields, afilu machnes umoitzi gmalim ukronois kolayim kuloi derech mavui. Even if this goy he brings in camels and wagons all day, all of Shabbos through the mavui, which is shared by the Israelim, nonetheless ein Israel bnei mavui. We say that his main entrance is actually his own private entrance out into the fields, and therefore his primary. Exit and entrance is not the Movoy, and therefore he does not restrict the Movoy. My Tama, what's the reason for this? But because we assume that his own private entrance is the one Bahu Nichale, that's the one that he prefers, and therefore he's not considered as being an integral part of or sharing the Movoy, the Chotzer, and the Movoy with the Yisraelim. Asks the Gemara Iboyelahu, Pasuach le Karpeif Mahu. What happens when the goy has an exit, not to a, an open field, a bika, rather he has an entrance, an exit, to a karpif. A karpif is an area which is fenced in, it's surrounded, and the area outside his home is actually a karpif, it's, it's, it's surrounded by walls. And then what's the halacha there? So what do we say that since it's not as open as a field, it's not his preferred exit or entrance? Or do we say no, that since he's got a way out into a big, large, fenced-in area, he still prefers that over the Mavoy? And could it be it actually makes a difference as to how big the fenced-in area is, as to whether he's going to prefer the Karpeif or he's going to prefer the Mavoy? That was the question. Pasuach le Karpeif now. Omer of Nachman bar Ami Mishmeid Ulpana. Of Nachman bar Ami said in the name of Ulpana, and Rashi seems to explain that Ulpana is not the name of a person, it just means from teachings, that means he heard from his Rebbe, who heard from his Rebbe. It was teachings that were, that were received by tradition. Others say that Ulpana is the name of one of the Chachomim, but either way, he held a filu pasuach le karpif. Even if this guy is chotzer, 
is open to a karpeif, nonetheless, it does not restrict the mavoi. Even though it's not an open field, it's a secluded area, it does not ask the, the, the mavoi, and we assume that he prefers the karpeif over the mavoi. The Gemara is now going to explain. Rabbi Rav Yosef to Omra Tarvayu. Rabbi Rav Yosef both said that Nochri, this case of a Goy who has access from his Chotzer, from his home or from his Chotzer, to a Karpev, to this enclosed area, Beis Sosayim, if this Karpev is up to the size of a Beis Sosayim, which we've learned is 5,000 square Amois, Oyser. In that case, it, the Karpev is not big enough that he should prefer it over the Movoi, and therefore his preferred exit is in the Movoi, and therefore he's sharing the Movoi with the Israelim and restricts the use of the Movoi. Yoisa mi Beisosayim. However, if the Karpev is larger than 5,000 square Amois, Eino Yoisa, then we assume that he prefers to go out into the large Karpev that's exclusively, he's got an exit there on his own, and he prefers that over the Movoi, and he no longer is considered as one of the people who are sharing the Movoi, and therefore does not restrict the Israelim in the Movoi from carrying in the Movoi. Of Yisrael. However, what happens if you have a Yisrael in this Movoi, and he did not join the rest of the Eruv with, or the Shitufe Movois, with other Yisraelim? But this Yisrael himself, he has an exit, a private ent- exit, into this Karpev. Over there, the Aloch is going to be the other way around. If the area is up to the size of a Beis Hosayim, and if it's an area up to the size of a Beis Hosayim, then it's considered a Roshus Hayochid, and he can actually carry in that entire area, and therefore the Israel has got no problem, and he'll prefer to be able to go out into this Karpif and carry there. And even though it's up to the size of Beis Hosayim and not more, and for the guy that was an inconvenience and that size karpev, he still preferred the movoi. That's only true regarding a guy who's got camels and wagons, and if the enclosed area is just up to 5,000 square amis, it's not very useful for him. But Yisrael on Shabbos is typically not carrying around or leading camels and large wa- wagons. All he's doing is carrying things, smaller items, and therefore an area karpev, which is up to 5,000 square miles, he's allowed to carry in it, and therefore he prefers that area over the Movoi, and therefore he's no longer considered as a partner in the Movoi to the extent that he restricts the other people. However, if it's Yosem Ibeisosayim, if the enclosed area behind the Chatz of this Israel is more than a Beisosayim, and since this Beisosayim was not enclosed for residential purposes, he's not allowed to carry in this Beisosayim at all, more than four Amis. It has the halachas of a Karmelis, even though biblically speaking it's a Roshos Hayochid because it's enclosed, but the Chachomim said since it's so large it could get confused with the Roshos Arabim. You may think that you can carry in Roshos Arabim like you can carry there, and therefore they said you cannot carry four Amis in this Karpev. Since he cannot carry there, he prefers the Movoi. And since he prefers the Movoi, therefore he's considered as one of the partners in the Movoi, since he didn't join the Eruv, he restricts the Movoi for everybody. He restricts the Movoi. This is a question we already addressed. If the Goy's Chotza is open to a Karpev, what's the Alocha? Omale Rav Huna answered him, Hari Omru, we already said before, Beis Osayim, Oyser, if it's only the size of 5,000 square Amis or less, then the Goy does not prefer the Karpev, and therefore he restricts the Movoi. Yoyser mi Beis Osayim, but if the area is larger than Beis Osayim, and the Goy's got no problem with carrying in an area of larger than Beis Osayim, he's allowed to carry as a Goy, and therefore he prefers the Karpev, and therefore he no longer restricts the use of the Movi for the other Yisraelim. Continues the Gemara. Omar Ula, Omar Abyeichanon. And we're now discussing a little bit more a Karpev, a larger Karpev, a smaller Karpev. Karpev Yoisemi Beisosayim. A typical enclosed area which is larger than 5,000 square Amis. It's enclosed, which means that biblically speaking, it's got the halacha, the status of a Roshus Hayochid. However, when it was closed, it was not enclosed 
for residential purposes, v'afilukur, v'afilu kuraim, even if it's very large, if it's as large as a kur or kuraim, which is tremendously larger than a typical beisosaim, hazoyrek letoyche, if somebody throws something from Erushos Horabim into it, chayev, is chayev min as we said, biblically speaking, the status of a karpe, if any size, any area that's enclosed by walls, is considered a Roshus Hayochid, and throwing something from Roshus Arabim into Roshus Hayochid is severely Osar and Chayev. Maitama, Mechitzahi, even though it's not Mukaf Ladira, it's a Mechitza, it's called a partition, it has the status of Roshus Hayochid. Elosha Mechuser is the urine, it's lacking residence or residential uses. And therefore, the Chachomim said, you'll get confused between it and the Roshos Arabim, and therefore we don't allow you Midrabonon, we don't allow you to carry in there four Amis. However, Minatayr, it's considered the Roshos Hayochit. Mosiv Rav Huna Bar Rav Huna Bar is now going to ask a question on Rabbi Yechanon. Rabbi Yechanon said that a Karpuf, which is more than Beis Asayim, even though it's not Mukaf Ladira, has the status of a Roshus Hayochid, to the extent that if one carries from Roshus Sarabim into it, he will be Chayev. Rav Huna is going to ask a question from a Brysa. Sela Shebeyam, in the middle of the sea. A sea is not an enclosed area, it has the status of a Karmelis. A Sela Shebeyam, in the middle of the sea you've got a rock. Gavoya Asoro, if it's ten Tfachim high. Veroich and four Tfachim wide, which is the dimensions of Eroshus Hayochid. Ein metal tulin, one is not allowed to carry. Loimin Toichoi Leyam, you cannot carry from it to the sea, because it itself is considered a Roshus Hayochid. The sea is considered a Karmelis, one's not allowed to carry it, it's only also mid Rabbonon. a sea. Minatir is no such thing as a Karmelist. It's either Roshus Arabim or Roshus Hayochid. Everything else is a, is a Mokim Ptur. And from a Mokim Ptur, one's allowed to carry from Roshus Hayochid to a Mokim Ptur or vice versa. And one's also allowed to carry from a Mokim Ptur into Roshus Arabim or vice versa. We hear the Chachomim said that one's not allowed to carry from a Roshus Hayochid or Roshus Arabim into a Karmelist. So one's not allowed to carry from this rock. Onto, into, into the sea or from the sea into the, onto the rock because it's co- considered as carrying from Rosh Hashanah to a Carmelis or vice versa and therefore it's also mid Rabbonon in metaltlin loy min toichoi leyam veloy min ayam letoichoi pochoi smikan if this rock is less than four tvachim wide or if it's less than ten tvachim high then metaltlin then one then the area of the rock itself is considered a Carmelis. And let's assume that, it, let's, Rashi keeps stressing, and we'll soon understand why, that when it says Pochis Mikan, even though it's true that if it's lacking either one of the dimensions, either the tent Tvachim high or the four Tvachim wide, this halach is true. But let's assume that, we'd, let's just talk about the width. That means let's just talk about the height and the differing width. That means let's assume it's not ten Tvachim high not ten tvachim high, it has the status of a Karmelis, and therefore pochis mikan metaltalin, it has the same status as the sea itself. The sea is a Karmelis, the rock being less than ten tvachim high is also a Karmelis, and to carry from a Karmelis to a Karmelis is muta. And now the Brysa continues with this type of ambiguous statement, a closing statement, ad kamo, how wide can the rock be? Ad beisosayim, until Beis Osayim. But if the rock is larger than Beis Osayim, then something is different. And the Brysa doesn't tell us if this is going on the first part of the Brysa, which is talking about a rock which is ten Tvachim high, and in that case we saw in the Brysa you cannot carry from the rock to the sea because the rock is Rosh Hashayochid and the sea is a Karmelis. And then the Bryce is putting a limitation on that and saying it's only if the rock is up to 2,000 Amois. But if the rock is more than 2,000 Amois, in that case the halacha would be different, so to speak, one would be able to carry from it into the sea, which would be difficult to understand, but that the Bryce may be saying that. Or that it's going on the second statement of the Brysa, where the Brysa said that if the rock is not ten Tvachim high, then the rock itself is considered a Karmelis, then one can carry from it to the sea, and from the sea to it, because they both have a status of Karmelis, 
And on that, the, the Bryce is putting in a closing statement saying that it's only true if the rock is up to a base or sime, up to 5,000 square amis. But if the rock is more than 5,000 square amis, then the halacha would be different. And so to speak, you would be able to, well, at that point, you will not be able to carry from the rock to the sea or vice versa. And that surely doesn't make sense. If the stone, being that it's not tent fochim high, is a caramelis, up until the point of two thousand of, of Beis Asayim, which is 5,000 square amois, and that thereby allowing you to carry from the rock to the sea, even more so that would be true if the rock is even wider. So that's something which the Gemara is now going to discuss. Ah, hi. On what section of the Brisa is the closing statement which limits a halacha to 5,000 square amois? On what is it going on? Ilema asefa. Is it going on this on the second statement of the Brisa, that said that a rock that is not ten tefachim high, then one can carry from the rock to the sea and vice versa, then beis asayim tfei the can it be that you can only carry from the rock to the sea if it's up to 5,000 square amis, but if it's larger than not, that doesn't make sense. Vahomi karamelis le karamelis kamateltil. In exactly the same way as a rock which is less than ten tefachim high, up to the width or the area of 5,000 square amois is considered a caramelis and therefore one can carry from the caramelis into the sea which is also a caramelis the same would apply if it's more than a base or same more than 5,000 square amois so it's clear that the the closing statement cannot be going on the final halacha of, on the second statement in the brysa elolav arisha it must be that the closing statement which limits the rock we're talking about to 5,000 square amis is talking about the ratio, which is a case where the rock is 10 tvochim high. And what did we see? The Bryce has said that a rock that is 10 tvochim high and at least 4 tvochim wide is considered a Roshus Hayochid. And you're not allowed to carry from Roshus Hayochid to the sea, which is a caramelis. And now the closing statement of the Bryce would be telling us that that's only true if the rock is up to 5,000 square amis. If the rock is more than base Asayim, then you'll, you would be allowed to carry from the rock into the sea. And that's very difficult to understand, because if the rock is ten tefachim high, it doesn't matter how large it is, it has the biblical status of Rosh Hayochid. The sea is a caramelis, and we know you're not allowed to carry from a Rosh Hayochid to a caramelis, irrespective of how large the Roshus Hayochid is. It's 10 Tvachim high, more than 4 Tvachim wide. There's no reason one should be allowed to carry from the rock into the sea, even if it's more than Beis Hosayim. But that's what the Gemara is going to discuss, and we're going to have three different possibilities of how to understand the final statement as referring to the opening statement of the Brisa. V'hochi Omar. So this is Rav Huna talking, and Rav Huna is assuming as follows. He's assuming that Sela Shabiyam, this rock in the sea, Gavoya Sora Varoichavarbo, that if this rock is ten Tvachim high and at least four Tvachim wide, Ein Metaltenin Loimitoichoi Liam, Veloimiyam Letoichoi. That is the opening statement of the Brysa. It's considered a Roshus Hayochid. You cannot carry from it to the sea, which has the status of a Carmelis. Vaad Kamo. How to. To what point, how large can the rock be for that halacha to be true? At Beis Asayim, until 5,000 square amis. Ho yeser mi Beis Asayim, metaltalin. But if the rock is more than Beis Asayim, even though it has the, even though we said it had the status of Rosh Hayochid, if it's larger than Beis Asayim, then metaltalin you can carry from it into the Carmelis. So Rav Huna is saying that Alma, you see from here, Carmelis he. If you're allowed to carry from the rock to the Carmelis, it must be the rock has changed its status from Roshos HaYochid to Carmelis. Therefore, it's mutter to carry from it to the sea. Tiyuv to Rabbi Eichanon, this is going to contradict Rabbi Eichanon. Rabbi Eichanon before, which is the beginning of this sugya, Rabbi Eichanon said that if you have a Karpif, which is also Roshos HaYochid, it's a, an enclosed area. And Rabbi Eichanon said that if the Karpif is more than 5,000 square amis, more than Beis Hosayim, if you throw something from the Rosh Hashanah into it, you're chayev. Because even though it's more than Beis Hosayim, it retains its biblical status of Rosh Hashanah So we would assume the same would apply regarding this stone. It's ten tefachim high, even though it's 
more than two th- more than base osai more than five thousand square amos. According to Rabbi Yechanan, it would retain its status of Roshos Hayochid. If it retains its status biblically of Roshos Hayochid, it would be Osur Midrabonon to carry from it into the sea. And we see here the Brisa says you are allowed to carry from it into the sea. This Brisa seems to contradict Rabbi Yechanan. That was Rav Huna's understanding of the first statement of the Brisa in view of the final statement. That the, Rav, Rav Huna understood that the Brisa must be telling us that more than Beis Asayim it loses its status of Rosh Hashayochid, becomes a Karmelist, and therefore you can carry into the sea and from the sea onto it. Not like Rabbi Yechanan who says that more than Beis Asayim does not strip the property, the area of its biblical status of Rosh Hashayochid. Omar Rav, Rav is now going to argue with Rav Huna and say that you're right that, and no one is going to disagree with this, that the final statement of the Brisa, which limits the halacha to 5,000 square amis, is going on the ratio. However, we have to learn it differently. Mandala Yoda Tirutsu Masnisa, only somebody who does not know how to answer Brisa's and explain Brisa's, Tiyufta Moisev Leilu Rabbi Eichnon. He's going to try and ask a question and refute Rabbi Eichnon from such a Brisa. And Rav is going to explain differently. I agree with you that the final statement of the Brisa is going on the Reisha that we're talking about a rock which is ten tefachim high. So what did it actually say in the Brisa? The Brisa said that a rock that is ten tefachim high and more than four tefachim, you're allowed to carry. You're not allowed to carry from it into the sea or from the sea into it. Why? Because the rock itself is Rosh Hashanah, the sea is a Karmelis, and the Chachomim prohibited us from carrying from Rosh Hashanah into a Karmelis. But what can we deduce from the first halacha in the Brisa? We can deduce that you're not allowed to carry from the rock into the sea, because the rock is Rosh Hashanah, and the sea is a Karmelis. But only that's Osa. What's Muta? What's Muta is to carry within the entire area of the rock itself. You can carry freely. It's ten tefachim high, more than four tefachim wide. It's a roshus hayochid. You can carry a roshus hayochid. And Rav says on that point is what the final statement in the Bryce is limiting to five thousand square amis. When can you carry freely on the rock? Only up to base or sime. And we know that a roshus hayochid. You're only allowed to carry within it freely midrabonon up to base or sime. If it's more than base or saim, you're only allowed to carry there if it was mukaf ladira, if it was surrounded for residential purposes. Over here, the rock, the walls of the rock, are actually the edges of the rock, they were not put there in order to enclose the area for residential purposes. So it's very good what the Brisa says. Up to 2,000 amas you can carry in the rock, not from the rock to the sea. If it's more than, not 2,000 amas, sorry, base asayim. If it's more than base asayim, you still can't carry from the rock to the sea because the rock still has the status of Rosh Hashayochid, biblically speaking, like Rabbi Yechanan said, that even more than base asayim, it's still Rosh Hashayochid. But not only can you not carry from the rock to the sea, if it's more than base asayim, you cannot carry more than four amas on the rock itself. Because it's such a large area, it will get confused with a Rosh Hashanah. If we allow you to carry on such a rock, you may by mistake carry in a Rosh Hashanah. And therefore the Chachamim said, more than Beis Asayim, more than 5,000 square amis, where the area was not enclosed for residential purposes, you're not allowed to carry even four amis. Let's see that inside. Hochi Omar, Ho B'Tzoychei Metaltin. And we deduce from the Halacha that you're only not allowed to carry from the rock to the sea. Ho B'Tzoychei, but within the rock itself, on the rock, Metaltin, you are allowed to carry. And that's what the final statement of the Bryce is telling us. about Kamo, how large can the rock be to still allow you to carry on the rock? At Beis Asayim, it's only up to 5,000 square amis. Beyond that, it's Osa. That was how Rava explained the Brisa in a way that we can explain, understand the Brisa, and yet it's not a contradiction to what Rabbi Yechanan said. Continues the Gemara, Rav Ashi Omar. Rav Ashi is going to give a third interpretation of the final statement of the Brisa, and the, in a way that also, just like, just like Rava, it will not be a contradiction to Rabbi Yechanan. What does Rav Ashi say? And let's go back to the opening statement of the Brisa. The Brisa said that if the rock is ten tefachim high and more than four tefachim wide, it is biblically considered a Rosh Hayochid. 
And let's assume, and that is what we are assuming, that the final statement of the Brysa is saying that the opening statement of the Brysa is limited to 2,000 Amois. To, uh, sorry, not 2,000 Amois, to Beis Asaim, to 5,000 square Amois. So the Brysa itself says the first statement that if the rock is Roshus HaYochid, which means it's 10 Tvachim high and more than 4 Tvachim wide, then you cannot carry from it into the sea because the sea is a Carmelis. We can deduce from there that on the rock itself you can carry because it's less than Beis Asaim, assuming it's less than 2, 000, uh, 5,000 square Amois, and therefore you can carry on the rock. But the Bryce itself doesn't speak explicitly about carrying on the rock, it only speaks about carrying from the rock to the sea. So let's assume that the final statement is talking about carrying from the rock to the sea. And the Bryce says that if the rock is 10 Tvachim high and it's up to Beis Osaim, then you cannot carry from, from the rock that, that, um, from the rock into the sea. If it's more than Beis Osaim, the f- closing statement of the Brysa says, you can carry from the rock into the sea. So what Rav Huna did with that understanding was, he says it must be the Brysa understood that more than Beis Osaim is no longer a Rosh Hayochid, and therefore you can carry from the rock to the sea, because they both have the status of a Caramelis. And you can't carry more than four Amois, not on the rock and not on the sea, obviously, but you can carry less than four Amois from the rock to the sea. They're both a Carmelis. And we had an issue with that because Rabbi Eichanon said that even more than Beis Asaim is still considered a Roshos Hayochid. Rav Ashi is now going to say, no, you're right, it's Roshos Hayochid, like Rabbi Eichanon said, and in spite of the fact that it retains its status of Roshos Hayochid, nonetheless, if it's more than Beis Asaim, you can carry from it to the sea. And that's very amazing. Why should that be true? The Chachamim said you're not allowed to carry from a Roshos Hayochid into a Carmelis. It's true that that is is only Midarabon on Minatayra you can carry from a Roshos Hayochid onto the sea, onto a Carmelis. But the Chachamim said it's Osa. So it seems that here, Ravashi is going to explain to us here is different. Even though normally you cannot carry from anything that's got a biblical status of a Roshos Hayochid, you cannot carry from it onto a Carmelis. However, here it's going to be different. And therefore, it will make sense. The Brysa says you can carry from the rock to the sea, but not because the rock loses its big biblical status of Rosh Hashayochid. Even though it retains that status, it becomes muta, and we have to understand that. L'oilo ma It's going on the opening statement of the Reisha. Hein omru v'hein omru. Because the Chachomim themselves, it's true that we got carried away a little bit with Rabbi Yechanan saying that the, an area of more than Beis Asayim is biblically considered a Roshos HaYochid. That hasn't changed. We're only talking here about Durabonons. And there are two Durabonons that we're discussing. There's one Durabonon. Can you carry within a Roshos HaYochid that's been encircled, that's been enclosed, not for residential purposes, and the area is larger than 5,000 square amis. Can one carry within it freely or not? And the halacha is no. I mean, I tell you, you can, Midrabon or not, because it's such a large area, it's not been enclosed for residential purposes, it's got that little bit too much similarity to Roshos Horabim. If we allow you to carry there, you may end up carrying in a Roshos Horabim. And therefore the Chachamim said it was Osa. That's one alocha midrabonon. There's another alocha midrabonon. If you have a Roshos Hayochid proper, are you allowed to carry from Roshos Hayochid into a Carmelis? The Chachamim said no, because you may then by mistake come to carry from Roshos Hayochid into Roshos Harabim. Over here in the case of the rock at sea, we have a little bit of an issue. If you have a very, very large rock that's more than Beis Osaim, in the event that we do not let you carry from the rock into the sea, onto the sea, the reason being because, biblically speaking, the rock is Roshos Hayochid, people might think, oh, the rock is Roshos Hayochid, I can then carry freely on the rock, even more than Fuamois, and they will overlook the issue of the fact that the Chachomim said you're not allowed to carry within a Roshos Hayochid if it's not been enclosed for residential purposes and it's larger than 5,000 square miles, you're not allowed to. It's not Mukaf Ladira. A Karpev She'enei Mukaf Ladira is you're not allowed to carry them for Amis or more. So normally we have one of two issues. 
either there's a discussion, can you carry from Roshos Hayochid into Roshos Rabim, or there's another, di- uh, or not into Roshos Rabim, from Roshos Hayochid into a Karmelis, and there's another discussion, can you carry in a very large Roshos Hayochid that's not been enclosed for residential purposes? But it's very rare to find a case where you have a large Roshos Hayochid that's not been enclosed for residential purposes, a Karp of She'ene Mukaf and there's a question of carrying from there into a Karmelis. So, according to the letter of the law, the halacha should be that you cannot carry from it into a Karmelis, because biblically speaking, the area is considered Rosh Hashayachid, but Midrabbonon it's considered a Karmelis because it's a Karpif in a Mukaf Ladira and it's Yosem Rebeis Asayim, so you cannot carry in it either. That's what should be the halacha. However, people are going to get confused and you have to make a decision. Either you say, that we're allowing you to carry on the entire area of the stone, even though it's Yoisami Beis Osaim. We're allowing you to carry there and taking that risk that you might confuse it with Rosh Hashanah and carrying Rosh Hashanah. And then at least we've safeguarded that people will perceive and look at the rock as Rosh Hashanah and remember that they cannot carry from there into the sea, which is a Carmelis. Or we say no, we say you cannot carry on the rock itself because it's more than Beis Hosaim, but if you cannot carry there, people will assume that it's a Karmelist, and they will carry from there onto the sea, which is also a Karmelist, and they won't realize that it's only got the halachas of a Karmelist midrabonon because it's too large, but in and of itself, it's a Roshos Hayochid minatera, and therefore one should not be allowed to carry from it to the sea. So one of these two, the Chachomim had to decide who is overriding who, but we cannot keep both halochas. Hein omru vehein omru, these are two derabonons, and only one of them can stay. Hein omru, they said, karpef yoisim beis osayim, shaloi hukaf ladira, if it's an enclosed area that's not been enclosed for residential purposes, and it's larger than 5,000 square amis, ein metal tlimboi elo arba'am, but arba'amis, you can only carry on it and in it up to four amis, not more. They also said, Anything that even just Minatayra is considered Roshos Hayochid, you cannot carry from it to a Carmelis. And therefore, Beis Sosayim, the Shori little Tule. Now we're explaining the Brysa. If this rock is up to Beis Sosayim, it's not more than 5,000 square amois. The Shori little Tule Bekule, even Midrabonon, you're allowed to carry in the entire area. Then the halacha of not carrying from Rosh Hashanah to Carmelis stands in its place because the rock itself has got all the halachas of Rosh Hashanah, including the permission to carry any amount on it. And therefore, people won't make any mistakes and we will not carry from the rock to the sea. My time away, Rosh Hashanah, because it has all the properties of Rosh Hashanah, including being allowed to carry anywhere within it, because it's less than Beis Hosayim. And that was the opening statement of the Brysa. Yes, I'm in Beis Hosayim. However, if this rock is more than 5,000 square amis, the also little Tule Bekulei, the Chachomim said you cannot carry in the entire area lest you confuse it with the Rosh Hashanah Rabbim. Sharu Rabbonon, the Rabbonon themselves allowed people little Tule Mitoichei Liyam Umiyam Letoichei they allowed people to carry from it to the sea. Even though the sea is a Carmelis, or is not a Rosh Hashanah, even in biblical terms, the rock is only got the halachas of a Carmelis that you cannot carry freely in it, only Medirabonon. So the Gemara says, my tama, the reason the Chachomim said that you can carry from the rock to the sea, even though the rock, Min is considered Rosh Hashanah and the sea not, Dilma Omri Rosh Hashanah Gmurahi, because if we don't let you carry from the rock to the sea, people will think that the reason you can't carry is because the rock is the Rosh Hashayochid. V'osi little tule bekule, and then they're going to, by mistake, carry in the entire rock. But since it's more than Beis Hosayim, that's Osa. And therefore the Chachomim said, in order to preserve the prohibition of carrying freely on the rock, we're wavering the prohibition of carrying from the rock to the sea. Asks the Gemara Maishna, why did you choose that halacha over that halacha? You could have done the opposite. You could have said that you cannot carry from the sea, to, from the rock to the sea, and vice versa. 
and you can carry even though it's more than base or same. Let them carry even though it's more than base or same. They'll think it's Ushus Hayochid and they'll remember not to carry into the sea. Why are you choosing the other way around? Says the Gemara, Toichoi Shchiach. It's much more common for a person to carry on the rock than for a person to carry from the rock to the sea or vice versa. It's less common. And therefore the Chachomim said, I'd rather waver the less common scenario, which is carrying from the sea, to, from the rock to the sea, or from the sea to the rock, and to uphold the halacha of not carrying freely on the rock, since it's more than base or same, we don't want people to carry on the rock. And the Mil Tashem, in the next year, we're going to continue from here.